Okay, so we got all this from Hemsuit, and it came with the case, the bezel, the dial, a beautiful watch band. There you go, Hemsuit. Oh, that's right, in the face, by the way, he put my name on it, which was awesome. I had to get the Miyota movement. And initially I wasn't too psyched about Miyota, but I've really come to like it. There you can see it there. So the process that I'm going to use is I'm going to assemble the movement and the hands first and the dial. Put that all together. Then I'll get to the case and I'll adjust the stem with the crown. This nice little crown there that came with the case. I didn't have to buy anything extra. And the case came with the right little plastic piece. You can see the dial and the hands. The hands are wonderful. Uh, the bezel, great. So the first step, get the movement together. Oh, and I don't want to touch any of this with my bare hands because I am going to leave fingerprints everywhere. So I can either put on a pair of gloves or I will use just like the cut the fingers off the gloves and use little finger gloves. I don't know. What do you call them? That way I don't leave prints everywhere. So I'm going to clean the dial first, and I have this uh, stuff called, I don't know, it's for cleaning camera lenses, clear sight. I don't know exactly what's inside, but what I'm going to do is use a, a lint-free cloth and kind of clean all the schmutz off of the dial. Not a lot, just from, from transportation. Now on the back of the dial, there are these little feet and they were slightly bent from transportation, so I kind of straightened them up really carefully. I didn't want to break them off because it's these little feet that fit onto the movement. Now, the movement secures these dial feet with two tiny, tiny, tiny little screws. You can see them right here. I'll circle them. There you go. Very, very tiny screws. I had to use my smallest screwdriver and had to even sharpen up the screwdriver just a little bit in order to fit in the screw head. And it took a couple of goes to get those screws in the hole and then once I was able to start them, it was easy. But believe me, I dropped them a couple times. This is one of the reasons I like to use a mat in order to kind of work over because I, if I dropped one of these screws onto the carpet, I would never see it again. So there you go. Patience, tiny little screws, there you go. I'll clean the face again because, you know, lint or whatever, you want to make sure the face is 100%. Now, one of the tricks that I learned was you kind of dial the watch and kind of wind it till it just about trips over to the next day. That's when you know it's midnight. And that's when I'm going to line the hands up. So it just tripped over from 19 to 20, and that should be set. The other thing I did is I put the plastic holder that came with the watch case and I put it on the movement, and then I dropped the whole thing onto uh, one of my movement holders. That way, it's a little stable, and I don't have to worry about the counterweight in the back getting pinched or touched. You should never touch the counterweight. And it's all nice and secure and safe, and when I do the next thing, it's just kind of sturdy. Not too tight that I'm going to bend anything, just so it doesn't wiggle around on me. Right? Love those little finger condom things. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Let's go, let's go do this. So the first thing is I cut a little piece of thin plastic from one of the plastic bags that some of the parts came with, and I cut a little V into it so that it sits right on the dial and it gives me access to the, uh, to the movement parts. Um, Again, I don't want to leave any fingerprints or even worse, scratch the surface. Now, this is basically showing how the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand all fit together. The second hand has got a little tube that fits over the post, and it's really small. I use a really high-power set of um, magnifying lenses to, to see what I'm doing. Um, I'll put a link to what that is somewhere. Now, this is I'm using some uh, Rondo... Uh, this is basically clay. It's putty clay for cleaning a watch surface. Um, and I use it to hold the hand and then get it just over the stem, a little, you know, where the hand goes. And then I use a hand press to push it down over that piece. I should really learn the names of this. But, uh, you know, this is my second watch. Give me a break. So I get it nice and centered and it's 
on there firmly. I didn't push too hard to bend anything. Looks good. And then you basically wash, rinse, and repeat for the second hand. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the, the, the minute hand. So the minute hand, uh, you know, pick it up with a pair of tweezers. It's nice and clean. Um, it kind of, well, it's, it's tough to pick up these tiny little things. Uh, da -da -da. And, oh, oh, didn't go far, didn't go far. <sighs> I've gotten a lot better at this as far as not dropping things on the carpet. That really slows down a build. So again, just the, the stickiness of the putty allows me to place it just over. Ugh. Patience, patience, patience. I don't want to bend anything. I don't want to break anything. Just go slow. The magnifying lenses really make a difference. You can see exactly what you're doing. So you can drop it right in on top of that shaft, press it down, and... There you go. If you can only see what I'm seeing, I mean, I know the camera doesn't do it justice, but I'm wearing a, uh, the thing's got a, the headset headpiece that I wear has a little LED light, so it really illuminates the job. And there's, I'm wearing reading glasses, and then there's two additional lenses to really zoom in on this, so I can see exactly what I'm doing. The toughest part is the second hand. I didn't film it, you know, the way I wanted to, but um, there's a little pin and a tube you can kind of eh, you can kind of see but I get everything nicely lined up and then make sure nothing's banging into, into each other uh, take a look at it from the side you can make slight adjustments to make sure nothing's curved and then just wind it up and let it watch <laughs> watch it go and it's very very satisfying at this point I also want to make sure that there's no additional lint or anything like that. Now I've dropped the movement into the case and I did that by first placing the case over the movement then just kinda flipping the whole thing over and using my tweezers I can kinda rotate the movement a little bit in order to get it to line up so the date window is perfect. Now the fun part begins. Now we get to make the stem fit. Now the stem that came with the movement um, no, uh, the, the movement comes with a nice long stem, um, and the, it came with a, a temporary one that probably is too short. But so I'm going to take the long stem. There's a little button to release the stem that's on the movement. So you, yeah, it's the little tiny button. It's it's tiny, tiny, tiny. It's right about there. There you go. So we're going to get this in there where it needs to go, and slowly start to trim the stem uh, till it fits. And this is something where just take your time. I don't have a drawer full of these. It only came with one. So I'm going to, I, I put the crown on, put it in there, and see how much distance I have to cut off. So I use these little nippers. Actually, why don't I move this just out of the way a little bit so I don't get anything on it. There we go. And uh, I clip that down. Um, you can see I'm kind of getting a little crooked here. Hold on. Um, and there. Okay, so that's back in the watch. And you can see how far away it is from the case. So that's what, um, three, four, maybe five millimeters to cut off. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak up on this. I'm going to take off maybe a millimeter at a time until it gets a little closer. Then I'm going to do like a half millimeter. So it does have a little bit of springiness, but you don't want to over torque that. So push the button, pull the thing out, and unthread it, adjust it down a little bit. And I use the sandpaper in between each cut in order to take the burr off. And again, go slow. If you have to do it 10 times, then please do it 10 times because you don't want to end up being too short and having to throw this away. So this is uh, attempt number two. Get that in there and click, click. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, probably got another two and a half millimeters to do it. Maybe. Uh, well. No, we'll see. Yeah, we'll go slow and we'll see what happens. And just push that little button. Beep. And out it comes. Again, nipper, sandpaper. Put it back on the crown. Uh, this is probably, this is my fifth time doing it so far. Oh, uh, clicks in really nicely. And 
How does that... Oh, I can... I think I grabbed threads. That's that's great. The crown screws down, and I would say that is going to work. You unscrew it. It pops out. Click, click, click. Good. And that all works. Everything moves. Outstanding. Push that in. So at this point, what I'm going to do... I'm going to take it all out, unscrew it, and put a little bit of um, little bit of a glue adhesive. I use this stuff right here. It's uh, let me get this out first. I'll show you. Yeah, because you don't want you don't want to forget the glue because there could be when you're trying to unwind or do something. If there's no glue, it'll just slip. So I'll take the crumb back off. And I use this stuff right here. This is a hypo cement. It's basically like a rubber cement or a silicone glue. It's nothing too fancy, but it's really got a really tiny, tiny, tiny little hole. So you can really put a nice little drop. So I put a drop on the threads for the crown. And then I put a couple of drops here and, you know, around the here in the casing just to kind of lock things in. Uh, it's probably overkill, but just to keep the whole thing from moving or rotating. It's not going to spin once the, the crown is installed. But I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy. So I put a little hypo cement on the stem for the crown threads. You can see the drop right there. And maybe a little... Can you see that? I don't know if you... Maybe you can. A little drop. I, literally just a tiny drop. And again, it's probably overkill. But there you go. That clicked in nicely. Okay. And get that to sit. I probably could have taken another micron off of that. But... It's okay. It's, it feels good. And you can see that counterweight swings around nicely. Uh, this particular case has a plain background, nothing really fancy on it. It'd be good for engraving, like, uh, um, I don't know, to my son for a good job mowing the lawn. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> so just kind of get it started up there. There you go. That's good. That's good. That's good. And then what I use is... Um, this little handle thing and it's got some double sided tape on it and you can see this little sticky tape and it's just enough to kind of put on there and give a little quarter turn so it's secure and Bob's your uncle and that side is done cool so the next step is I'm going to put the bezel on oh you might have noticed the the crystal looks a little weird it still has the protective coating on it so at this point why don't we should I take this off yeah, okay. you know what? Why don't we take this off? Um, oh, that's right. And there's some adhesive here that is for the bezel insert. I'm going to leave the coating on for a second or so. Let's just kind of futz with it. There you go. Okay, that's good. So now the adhesive is exposed. That's just the protective covering for the adhesive. Now, on some bezels, there's a little... Uh, point so it kind of locks into a, a divot on the bezel this one doesn't have that so you just kind of have to line it up by eye and I'm pretty good at that you know I'm kind of retentive so just line it right up on the indice, indice right there and then press it down press it down all the way around let the glue kind of grab onto that bezel that's nice just press 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 good Okay, that's cool. All right, that worked. And I tell you, if this was a little off, it would drive me bananas. So I'm, I'm really retentive and making sure that's lined up 100%. Now, again, we've got that little protective coating on the top there. Just gonna... Now, you know what? I'm going to go slow, but nah. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm going to leave it on for a few minutes. I'm sorry, just teasing you. <laughs> I've got to like that. Oh, one of the cool things about this is um, you usually have to use a tool to put on a band but the the band that can that he sent has these quick release uh, little levers on them so all you have to do is just kind of line it up in the case and get the little pin there good and then pull down on the lever and then push the other side of the band in just my big fingers and click there it is pops right in and same thing for the other side get it in there uh, the leather's a little tight, which I really like, and this is a perfect size for this watch. 
No fooling around. And it's real, honest to goodness, thick leather. It feels fantastic. Uh, this kind of futs it there and. Uh, nope. The camera's not focusing. Sorry about that. Get it in there and. Oh! There it goes. I heard it click. Yep. Nice and tight. So. There it goes. I mean, start to finish. I know the, the video is edited a little bit. Uh, about an hour with the, the tools that I had. And the tools weren't there very fancy. We had the um, the tweezers, the hand press, uh, some nippers for the stem, uh, a little bit of glue. And, okay, yeah, why don't you know what? Okay, fine. We'll take this cover off. Ah, satisfying. Ooh, huh? Look at that. A little beauty shot there. I love the colors. I love the band. I've always been looking for a, you know, more of a cocoa band to match one of my shoes, a uh, pair of shoes. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. You know, the band has to match the shoes. It's Why else do you have many watches? So again, thank you to Alex big time for uh, helping me get all these parts together and putting together a beautiful, beautiful watch. Hopefully that was helpful. I don't know. You think? I love it. It's a beautiful watch. Thank you. I like it a lot.